to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Hope everybody's staying safe out there. Not a lot of news today, but there was one story I wanted to touch on. Um, before I get started, just want to let everybody know I'm going to have an interview up with uh, one of my subscribers. Jake did a great job. Have that up on the page around 6 o'clock as I continue that series once a week. In addition to that, I will be live tonight for a general Q&A regarding the New York Giants, which I always love doing and expect me to be live all the way leading up into the draft as we're getting ready for some New York Giants football. But kind of want to jump into this story that I found off at GiantsWire.com um, regarding Nate Solder. Sean O'Hara came out with some, you know, uh, pretty uh, distinctive quotes talking about how he thinks that Nate Solder still has a lot of good football left in him. Nate Solder, of course, was probably the most disappointing t uh, player on the team last year. Now, for being fair, when they signed Nate Solder, I never thought Nate Solder was going to be this great left tackle. I knew that they overpaid, but I knew that they were desperate to try to shore up that offensive line, and I was at least expecting average to slightly above average tackle play, something we haven't gotten. Now, if you go back to 2018, his first year with the New York Giants, the first eight games, he was horrible. The second eight, he was very strong. I think he only surrendered one sack over the last eight games of that season and was one of the contributing factors to why that Giants team had promise going into 2019. Last year, he completely regressed. Now, some of that could probably be pointed to a rookie quarterback. Some of that could be pointed to the fact that he had some issues in his personal life with his child. But at the end of the day, Nate Solder did not cut it. Now, with some of these quotes that came out from both Gettleman, O'Hara, and David Deal, does it lead you to believe that maybe the New York Giants may feel like he's still fine and they may not address an early draft pick on an offensive tackle and think they could get by with Cam Fleming um, on the right side along with Nick Gates? Me personally, I do not believe that. I still think that they're going to focus heavily on the offensive line early in this draft. Maybe they still take Isaiah Simmons, but if they do, I think they will take that tackle in the second round. They still have to think about the long-term future. They still have to think about the well-being of their quarterback down the line. Um, and I completely get the argument that people say, well, one of these rookie tackles will not be able to block one of these Supreme Pass Rushers year one. You're probably right, but you have to get the experience sooner than later. If you wait till next year, well, then you can make the same argument then that he wouldn't be good until the following year. And at that point, you're in year four of Daniel Jones' career. they got to get this offensive line situated. they got to get it situated soon. Will they take one at four? We're going to have to wait and see. Will they be able to trade down? I don't know. But me personally, even if the Giants have the same sentiments um, and feel the same exact way that Sean O'Hara does about Nate Solder, I still think that they would look to attack tackle early on in this draft, being that it is such a pressing need. But if Solder could get back to the way he was the last eight games of 2018, it would go a long way for the New York Giants. Now, if they draft the tackle, more than likely, I still think Solder remains on the left side, at least for the first year, being that there's familiarity between him and Hernandez there. You don't re want to really mess that up. Wills right now seems to be the favorite, and if it's not him, it's probably Wirfs. And both of them, most people project to be right tackles, at least in year one. Wills could certainly shift over to the left side, and that could be in the long-term plans, but he played right on the right side last year, even though he was the blind side protector for Tua. So I think Solder is going to be the starter, at least to start the year, on the left side, but it does not mean he will be there the following year. But let's jump into some of the quotes of what O'Hara had to say about Solder and uh, Gettleman as well. We'll start with the Gettleman quote, talking about depth on a roster. And he earlier, you know, earlier in the quotes went on to say that he doesn't feel that uh, Nate Solder, you know, played up to what he should have last year. And I don't think anybody would debate that. We're going to get into just how poor he played. Um, but he did say that, you know, even if he does believe in him, he's not going to shy away from taking a player if he feels like he could be the starter on the roster. Here it is. Everybody has to compete. Again, my thought process is we're not afraid to have too many good players at one position, to answer your question, which kind of scares you with Derrick Brown, even though I still don't believe that will happen. Joe knows Nate, which is helpful, and that's something I should have touched on. Of course, Joe Judge coached with the New England Patriots. Well, Nate Solder was there. Now, it's definitely a... Small connection. It's not like he coached the offensive line. And our offensive line coach, Mark Colombo, has never coached him. So it's a very slight connection. But yes, Joe Judge did coach on the staff while Solder was there. They have a relationship. They have a history. But we're going to bring in the best players. If they're at a position where there's an incumbent starter, then he's going to compete, Gettleman said. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll take the tackle in the first round. But what he is saying is, regardless, if we take a tackle and we feel like Nate Solder is not the answer... Coming out of training camp, Nate Solder's not going to start. We don't care how much he's getting paid. Like I said, because of familiarity, because of pa uh, past success, and, you know, the expectations we had for Solder coming in, 
and the experience. You don't want to have too many inexperienced players. If you were to start Wills and a guy like Nick Gates, you have no experience on that offensive line. So I do think Solder will at least get the opportunity to start coming out of the gate. After this year, though, I don't think he's in the Giants' long-term plans. As I, as I, as I have expressed, you'd be saving $14 million on next year's cap if you were to cut him. But according to O'Hara, he thinks that there's still a lot in the tank when it comes to Nate Solder, something that I don't um, necessarily agree with. O'Hara said, I still think Nate Solder has some good football left, and I am not just talking about one year, O'Hara said via Giants.com. He could play another two or three years, and you could keep a guy at right tackle. I think some of his best football is still in him. Well, this is a put-up, shut-up year for Nate Solder. Like I said, I'll give him credit for that second eight-game uh, th- second eight game stretch in his first season here with the New York Giants. But outside of that, he has been atrocious. Um, and if you can save $14 million on next year's cap, I think you're going to do it unless Nate Solder really plays well. But I hope that O'Hara's right, and I hope he can provide that burst. Later in the article, he did go on to say that David Deal agrees with him. Uh, David Deal still thinks that he's got some uh, stuff left in the tank. Of course, both of these two are great former offensive linemen of the New York Giants, and I don't think that they'd go out of their way to bash a captain of that offensive line and a guy that has prior success with the New England Patriots. So take this for what you will. Um, In addition to that, I just wanted to pull up just how poor Solder was and why I do not have much confidence in him going forward and why I think this offensive tackle needs to be uh, addressed as soon as possible. The offensive line is something the Giants are focusing on heading into the 2020 season. PFF ranked them the number 17 in the league, which I don't understand when you get into this next stat. Yes, I realize that Remmers was pretty good at the guard. Hernandez, to me, was somewhat underwhelming, and Jalapeo was horrible, but the tackle play was among the worst. Following the 2019 season and tab tackles Nate Solder and Mike Remmers as weak points during the season, of course, Remmers has moved on. Solder's 57 pressures allowed this season were seven more than any other player in the NFL, and they had 97 combined pressures. Remmers ranked 10th worst in the league. So we did not do a good job of protecting our rookie quarterback. As I always say, I like to be fair. I like to assess everything in the situation. I recognize that we had a rookie quarterback who maybe didn't have the best pre-snap reads. I recognize that we had injuries on our offense, specifically Saquon Barkley, making us much more predictable when it came to passing situations. I also recognize we have a, had a poor defense, and we were playing from behind a lot, um, which would you know lead to more sacks when your quarterback's throwing the ball, I think, the eighth most times in the NFL. So all that needs to be factored in, but at the end of the day, do I believe in Nate Solder as a long-term answer for this New York Giants football team? I need a lot more convincing before I could believe that he's going to be the starting left tackle in 2021. And even if they believe that, I think you still need to address that right side. Nick Gates, at the end of the day, yeah, he played really well over three games. But there's an undrafted player who came into the league with limited, um, you know, limited expectations. And maybe he'll prove people wrong, and maybe he'll do that. But like Gettleman said, you can never have too much talent in one area, and you got to invest in protecting your quarterback. Will the Giants do it in round one? I don't know. Like I said, we're going to find out in just a couple of days. And if they don't, expect them to invest in in round two and probably even three. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.